Hello, hello, beautiful. Welcome to day five of the Incoming Papers Challenge. I'm Susanna Kay, professional organizer, and this week we are talking about how to handle your incoming papers. So all of that mail, the stuff the kids bring from school, the receipts you dump out of your purse, all of those papers that come into your home, however they get there, we're creating one system to handle all of them. That's the Incoming Papers Challenge this week, and that system is called the Action File. So if you've missed any of the days this week talking about the action file and how to set it up, then all of the replays and everything are available at the challenge schedule page. So you can catch the replays, you can catch the daily tasks and anything that you might have missed. But like I said, today is day five and we are talking about how to make it stick. By make it stick, I mean, how do you remember to process the to-do papers that are in there? How do you make it into a habit getting your papers into it? all of that. How do we make it actually work now that it's built? So that is what we're focusing on today. So as you hop on, let me know who you are and where you're joining me from. I see that Julie is here. Hi, Julie from Akron and Debbie. We have Connor is here from Hayes. And um, oh, I guess it's Connie. Connie, there we go. And Rita. Hi, every Hi, Rita. Hi, everybody. All right. So with your action file, if you are ever afraid that you will forget to do some of the to-do items in your action file, or if you're worried that some of these folders will just get really full, and how do the papers get back out of there, and will you actually remember to do it? That's what we're focusing on today. Now, just a reminder, the Incoming Papers Challenge is a free challenge, and it's going on from October 17th through 23rd, so this Sunday, 2022. And everything on the challenge schedule page will be there for approximately one week after the end of the challenge. So if you've not seen anything yet, make sure try this weekend to catch up on it. Also this weekend, remember we have our public group hike where you can hop on and work side by side with the rest of us. And I can be there to answer questions and we have our office hours. So if you do have any questions about the paper path course, the action file, the membership, anything like that, you can hop on and ask those questions live during the office hours event. All of that info is on the challenge schedule page. All right. So really quickly, I wanted to say hi to Lynn. Lynn is here. Welcome. And Beth, Lori from sunny and cool Cleveland. And Rita says, thank you for sharing that link through the email with all the dates and details of the challenge. That's so helpful. You're so welcome. Absolutely. I'm trying to make sure that you have everything that you need to succeed. <laughs> and Peg is here. Hi, Peg. She said, just shredded the papers in my to shred folder. Yay, woo, woo, Peg is rocking it. Love that. Jana's here. Hello, Jana. Great to have everybody here today. All right. Well, let's talk about this action file. So we set it up this week. We already talked about what folders to use, what to name your folders, the supplies you need, how to add custom folders. Um, we talked about how it works and how to get the papers into your action file. So today let's talk about how to get the papers back out of your action file and make sure that you don't miss any of those to-dos. If you missed any of the earlier uh, talks this week, remember, go to the challenge schedule page for those replays. Um, I'm not gonna go into it again today. But the action file, since every single paper that comes into your home goes into the action file, we need to make sure that it doesn't just go in there to die, <laughs> right? So the key with the action file if you're using just the standard folders, which would be to do, to enter, to read, to scan, to file, and any other folders that are not urgent, if you add custom folders that aren't necessarily urgent, then you only have one folder that you need to make sure to check. The rest of the folders are not going to be something that you have to check on a very regular basis. So that one folder that you need to make sure to pay attention to is your to-do folder, right? just the to-do folder, because the other folders, if they don't get done right away, it should not cause any problems, right? The other folders are just to enter, which means entering information from that item somewhere else, or to read, which means you only have to read it, you don't expect to have any other actions with it, or to scan, or to file, or you might have added to shred. So really, the only folder that you have to check on a regular basis would be your to-do folder. Now the other folders, when do you check those? Well, I kind of have a rule in our house where if I have time and 
I feel like grabbing one of those folders and processing them, then I will. Otherwise, when it gets full, it gets finished. So when my to read folder starts to get kind of full, I will grab my to read folder. And a lot of times I'll take it if I'm going to a doctor's appointment or if I have to go pick up my stepdaughter from school and wait in that car line, I'll grab the whole folder and take it with me. And then I can read through those items while I'm sitting there waiting anyway, right? That's the nice thing about having these folders. You can just grab the whole folder, take it with you. And then when you come back, anything that you've read that you can let go of, you can recycle it. Anything that you've read that you still need to keep, you can put it into file or to scan. And anything that you've read that you did find out that there's an action to do, you could stick it in your to-do folder, right? But other than that, that's a great way to get through your to-read folder. Take it with you when you're going to be sitting around for a bit or grab it out. And if you're going to be sitting in front of the TV a bit and kind of mindlessly having the TV on and reading, that's a great time. The same thing with something like the to enter folder. When you have time, just grab it and enter a bunch of items until you don't have time anymore. Or when it gets full, then enter them. Because really, if it's not already entered in, say, your contacts of your phone, that means it's still in your to enter folder. So you only have two places to look for that information, right? So it's not going to hurt anything. Same with to scan, to file. When it gets full, it gets finished. But to do, that's the stuff that would have deadlines and that would be important to check regularly. So we will talk about how to remember to check those to do's and the easiest way to get through them. That's going to be our main focus today with the action file. All right, before we go on to the next section, let's say hi to Valerie. Hi, Valerie, good to see you, and Joanna. And we have Terry's here. Hi, Terry, and Lavette, and Trina from Bonaire, Virginia. John Janice says, ah, today is the day that we learn that we can breathe and not be on high alert for fear of forgetting important things. Exactly. Yeah, I want you to not stress about this and be able to breathe and have freedom because the action file not be totally terrified. <laughs> Hi, Wendy. Good to have you here. All right. So just as a reminder also, if you're considering the Paper Path course, you only have about two and a half days left. No, three. Yeah, two and a half days. I can't count. Two and a half days left to enroll in the Paper Path course before enrollment closes. And tomorrow at midnight is when that bonus welcome party goes away. So if you are interested in grabbing the Paper Path course so you can learn how to organize all of your papers in your house, the entire Paper Path system where the action file is just step one, then make sure to do it before the end of the night tomorrow, which is Saturday, so you can still get that welcome party bonus. All right. So with your action file, there are a few things that I want you to think about. I want you to start off by reframing your thinking. So when we often think about our to-do file, if you think about a to-do file, you think, okay, I have to, as soon as I grab that file and open that, I have to do everything in there. Well, I want you to change that thinking. Checking your to-do file does not mean that you have to actually do anything in the file, right? If you can set up a habit of just checking it to make sure that you know what's coming up and what's due, you don't have to do it. You just have to check it. Then you can be aware and make sure that the important things get done in time, but it does not have to be as overwhelming. So what I do with my to-do folder a couple times a week, a lot of times what I do is while, it's, while my coffee is brewing, then I will grab my to-do folder, I will open it up, and I will go through all of the papers in my to-do folder and look to see what needs to be done before the next time I plan to check my to-do folder or that week. So just what needs to be done coming up soon, right? And those are the items that I'm going to focus on. I won't necessarily do them right, there, right then, but I'm going to kind of flag them. We'll talk about some ways to make them stand out. But I'm gonna kind of flag them for these have to be done now. And Everything else that does not need to be done then or that I don't feel like doing yet can stay in the to-do folder. Sometimes I'll pull out something that's not necessarily due right then, but I'm in the mood to be able to get it done. And I'll pull that out too. But just because you're checking your to-do folder does not mean you're doing everything in the folder in that moment. You're just becoming aware of what needs to be done and making sure that it's not forgotten. Another way to reframe your thinking, instead of to-do, you can also give it a fun name. So some of the fun names that you could do, 
are like the future success folder or the get it done folder or um, the five minute folder, because maybe you want to think uh, one of the tricks is to think five minutes or think one paper and not think about all of them. So when I say that, I mean, maybe every once in a while, when you have five minutes worth of time, you go in and you find something in your to-do folder that you can do within five minutes. Or maybe you just pull out one paper and you can give your to-do folder a fun name instead of to-do if you want to, in order to inspire you. And also there's something in our brain where when we see to-do, it brings up that resistance, right? But if you give it a fun name like future success, then that resistance is not going to automatically come up. So giving it a fun name can be a great reframe of the way that you're thinking. You can also think instead of um, checking your to-do folder or doing your to-do folder, you can think of it as let's browse the to-dos, right? Instead of I have to do my to-dos, I'm going to browse my to-dos today because browsing means you're just going to look at it and see what's coming up, right? You don't have to do them. So checking your to-do folder does not mean you have to do it right then. You're just sort of flagging what needs to be done before the next time you will see your to-dos. You can give your folder a fun name, something like maybe future success folder or get it done folder, and that will help your brain not immediately put up resistance. You can also think about it as browsing your to-dos instead of checking your to-dos. And then you can also think about it instead of thinking about having to do your to-dos, think about, okay, well, I've got five minutes. I can do a five-minute task, or maybe I'm going to do one paper, right? So those are some fun ways to reframe your thinking, because if your thinking is, um, if your thinking is holding you back and giving you resistance, then that's one of those things that we can change over time. <clears throat> Okay, really quickly, I want to say hello to Eileen, who's popped on. Hi, Eileen. And Marilyn, Debbie's here, and she says, is the Paper Path course and membership available to purchase at any time if we have purchased the course? Oh, you're talking about just the membership. The membership, yes. There's no deadline to purchase the membership. So you can always go to SusannaK.com and click on store and join the membership anytime. The course is the only thing that is, the enrollment is ending. Um, Sunday evening, and the bonus goes away Saturday evening. So hopefully that answered your question. And yes, the membership is just that support for that course. Uh, Maggie says, I will take your course for organizing papers. Thanks. Oh, fantastic. Yay, Maggie. Woo, woo. I am so excited to have you join me with the Paper Path course. If you need anything at all, once you sign up, you will have my email address. You'll have all the support you need. You're going to do amazing. Hey, Peggy, she says, a bit late from South Tampa. Well, I'm glad that you're here. Not a problem. Jana says, can you tell about the welcome party? I must have missed that info. My internet wasn't working right yesterday. So the bonus for if you sign up for the Paper Path course before the end of the night, Saturday, or if you already own the Paper Path course or membership. If you already own it, whenever I have a bonus, I try to always share it with people who already own it. Then you are invited to the welcome party. The welcome party will be live on Thursday night, October 27th at 6 p.m. Eastern time. You can either attend live or if you can't make it live at that time, there will be a replay shared with everybody who's earned the bonus. But the welcome party is basically a chance to hop on to Zoom, celebrate the fact that you joined the Paper Path course. We're going to go over what to expect from the Paper Path course and the membership and how to get the most out of it. So you're going to kind of get a walk through the course and the best way to succeed at it and get started in the right foot. And you'll get to see some of the other people who have joined in the course and are starting this journey with you. So it's just a fun chance to get to know each other and to learn about how to make the most out of your course. So that's the welcome party. <laughs> Rita says, ah. <laughs> uh, oh, Jana says, that's a good idea. You're going to shop your to-dos. Oh, I love that. That's a great uh, reframing of how you think about your to-dos. <laughs> and Rita says, ha, that's funny, Jana. Um, Jenny says, I use to done. It really helps me frame it as an accomplished task. Oh, I like that. Future thinking. And that way it's not as intimidating because you're already thinking about it as done and succeeding. Great one, Jenny. Love it. All right. So we talked about reframing your thinking, right? And if you enjoyed any of those reframing thoughts, you know, hit the heart or the like button 
and on the video. So I know that that's something that you enjoyed. But aside from reframing your thinking, another great way to change your mindset and make it a little bit easier to get those to-dos done is to make it a game. So every once in a while, I will play to-do roulette with myself. (laughs) And to-do roulette is basically... I will go over to the to-do folder and I will randomly pull one paper out of my to-do folder. And whatever paper I pull out, I have to do it. So it kind of makes it fun because you aren't sure. This could be maybe a two-second to-do item or it could be, you know, a 30-minute one. So I do it when I have a little bit of extra time. But most of the time when I do my to-do roulette, I pull out something that's really not that bad, especially because I'm only pulling out one, right? So there's the fun of the roulette and... Even if you do pull out one of the bigger to-dos, you know you're only doing one. You're not doing the whole folder. So to-do roulette is a fun way to just every once in a while get some of those to-dos done. Another game that you can do with your to-do folder is the 15-minute challenge, where you open your to-do folder, you set the timer 15 minutes, and you see how many of those to-do papers you can eliminate within 15 minutes. So, of course, the longer to-dos you won't be picking out unless there's just one that's 15 minutes. A lot of times this is a great way to get a bunch of those little tiny to-dos done. So you could do a 15-minute challenge. You could do a 30-minute challenge. Just don't make it a very long challenge because then it's no longer a fun game. (laughs) It's more of a task. But the 15-minute challenge is fun. And then also it's nice if you keep a done list or a to-done list, (laughs) then it's great whenever you do any of your to-dos, make sure to add it to your done list so you feel that sense of accomplishment and you can see what you got done that day. You can also post your successes of getting through some of your to-dos in the group. So whether it's in, if you're a member, you have the Facebook private group, the Campfire group. Um, There's also the public home challenges group that you can post it in and Everybody in the group understands the challenge of getting through the to-do items. So we can all celebrate with you. So find a way to celebrate. And then also you can do action file buddies. So action file buddies would just be maybe somebody else also has a to-do folder or their action file. And you can work either side by side with them. You guys could set a time where you meet over Zoom You could do the group hikes. If you are a PATH member, we have our group hikes and the action file is perfect to bring to the group hikes and get done with the group. Um, Or you could even just have a check-in with a friend. Say, hey, did you do your action file today or how many to-dos did you get done? So there are definitely some support and resources out there such as the PATH membership. If you don't already have one of these systems set up, then we already have those systems set up for you. But those are some fun ways that you can turn it into a game. So let me know really quickly in the comments, are you a Pathfinder, one of our Path members? Are you a Pathfinder? Um, I know that we already have several Pathfinders here, and I would love to hear who all is a Pathfinder that's joining us. Really quickly, I want to say, see, Rita says, question, if we took the course in the past, is the new Pathfinder course different? Apologies if you covered this already. Uh, The only difference um, with the paper path course, we are changing over right now to a new back end system. So the software is changing right now. And throughout that change, really, you won't see a huge difference. You might see a slightly different look in it because the new software will have a little bit of a look that's um, a different design, but it's structured about the same. The one change that we made to the structure is we moved the quick sort section. That's the section of the course where we talk about the onion method and the easiest way to sort through old papers. We moved that further down in the milestones. So we do it now after our important papers instead of the second step. But that is really the only main change in the course. Slightly different look because we have the new software that we're moving it over to and that one milestone has just moved to a different place. But other than that, It's exactly the same as what you're used to, and you still have access to any new updates. Whenever you buy the course, anytime we do any updates to the course, you always have the most up-to-date information. Jenny says, my brain does well with to done challenges and rewards. I do love that, Jenny. My brain does a lot better when I think about rewards and challenges and finishing too. I love it. 
Oh, yay. Somebody on Facebook says, I'm a pathfinder. Lori says, I'm a pathfinder. And Joanna says, pathfinder here. Wendy says, I'm a pathfinder. And it's been so helpful. Rita says, I'm a pathfinder. She says, got it. Thank you for clarifying. So if you're considering joining the path, you already see a bunch of people that you would be able to hop in and see on the group hikes and stuff. I know Lori and Joanna and Wendy and Rita hop onto our group hikes often and you get to see their faces and get to know them better. Julie says, I did the Life Finder course. Is the path uh, the paper path course different? Yes, the paper path course is different. So the Spark Life Finder is actually, you can see it over on my desk. That's just a tool. And that's just a tool that will hold your important information. The pa paper path course is how to set up all of the different paper systems, the paper path systems in your home. So it's how to organize all of the different papers in your home from incoming papers to your filing cabinets, short-term files, long-term files, self-purging files. We talk about important papers and how to either set up your own important papers binder or if you have the Spark Life binder, how to get that filled in and how that works with the course. We do special papers. And then we also talk about how to sort old papers. So if you have boxes and boxes of old papers or laundry baskets full or a completely overstuffed file cabinet, we talk about the easiest way to sort through all those old papers and work them into the new system, just the ones you want to keep. And we talk about decision making on papers, what your paper personality type is, um, and I give you a whole lot of different resources to make it all easier. So yes, it's very different because the Paper Path course is how to organize all of it, broken down one step at a time. And the Life Binder is simply a tool. It is where you put your information for some of the important information. Good question. Kay says, just arrived. Great course. Learning so much. Fantastic. Oh, I'm so glad. Kay. <laughs> Jenny says, Life Binder for life. Yes. Amen. Peg says, I'm a Pathfinder. See, that's another one. Peg comes to the group hikes a lot. She says, and Lori is my accountability partner. We had our own Lori and Peg hike this morning. Yay. Yes. As a PATH member, a lot of times you can even connect with other members and have your own hikes and accountability buddies offline. You don't have to wait for the whole group too. And Peg and Lori have, uh, they've done an amazing job of that. It's been awesome. Well, fantastic. So we talked so far about reframing your thinking, right? We talked about that there's really only one folder that you have to check if you're using the standard folders. It's just the to-do folder. The other ones, when they get full, they get finished. We talked about making it a game. Now, this is the one, if you are an out of sight, out of mind person, and you are afraid that you will forget once your papers are in that to-do to folder, that's how I am, right? As soon as I can't see it anymore, I'm terrified that I will forget to do it and forget that it's even in that folder. So setting visual reminders are perfect for you if this is one of your fears, or if you're just getting used to your action file and the fact that that's where your papers are. So here are some ways, if you're an out of sight, out of minder, here are some visual ways that you can make sure you don't miss any of your to-dos. So one of the easiest ways is just to clip your to-do items to the front of your action file. So basically when you browse or shop, as Jana came up with, when you shop your to-dos, and look to see what important to-dos are coming up as due before the next time you plan to check, you can pull those out and just, you can clip them right to the front of your action file. So you know these are the ones that have to be done like very soon before the next time you check. So these are the nows, right? So you have that visual reminder. If it's clipped to the front, that means it's important to do now. If it's still in the folder, that means it is okay until the next time you browse or shop your to-do folder right? So these are the ones that you have to worry about. And if there's nothing clipped to the front, that means that you're too done. <laughs> so you don't have anything urgent, right? So clipping them to the front of your action file, whatever type of action file you have, this will work with. If you clip the important to do's to the front, then you will make sure that you do not miss anything at all that has to be done before the next time you check. Another option, if you are putting your action file near a wall, or if you have one of the ones that hang on the wall, you could use a cork board and just put like the bulletin board right over or near your action file and 
pin up any to do's that are necessary to do now, basically. Or you could do one of those clear wall pockets. Remember those clear acrylic cascading file folders that we talked about in day one? I think I can probably even pull up a picture for you. But if you use one of those under or near your action file, since it's clear, then you would be able to see through it. So let me pull up the example of what I'm talking about. Here we go. So these are the clear ones. You can use them for your entire action file if you wanted to, and you can hang them on the wall. And if you wanted to, the bottom one can be clear, no folder in it, and you just put your to-dos that are due now. Or you can have just one of them next to your action file, just a clear one, no folder, just clear so you can see if there are papers in it or not. So that is an option for making sure that you can see it. Another option is they do sell hanging file folders that are clear. So in your action file, if you wanted your front one to be clear, then you could always see if there are to-do papers in your to-do file that way. So those are some ways that if you are an out of sight, out of minder, then you can see what needs to be done. So just a reminder, you can clip the next to-dos, the one, just the ones that are upcoming and due soon to the front. You could add a bulletin board or one of those clear pockets to the like somewhere near your action file. Or you could even do a clear hanging file folder within the very front of your action file so you can see what is due. So my out of sight, out of minders, there you go. Lori says to Rita, she says, I got an email from Susanna suggesting to review the new changes to the Paper Path course and send her an email if you want to know where you left off on modules from the previous version. Absolutely. That's so true. So if you already have the course and you wanted to make sure that all of your tracking stays intact as we change over, just shoot me an email and I will send you your progress from the course so far. Uh, Beth says, that's me. And out of sight, out of minder, you and me both, Beth. We we must be soul sisters because I am such an out of sight, out of minder, and it can be a struggle. <laughs> Rita says to Lori, thank you so much. I'll check my emails and the course site as well. It's embarrassing, but now I can't remember if I've taken the Paper Path course. Well, Rita, as soon as you log in, go to SusannaK.com and click login, you will see in your online library, if it says Paper Path course, not the PATH membership, but the Paper Path course. If that's in your library, then that means that you have purchased it before. If it's not in your library, that means you have not. And you can always email me at hello at SusannaK.com to verify if you need to as well. I'm always here to help you out. Yep, see? So Lori says the very same thing. And she says, Stephanie, yes, yeah, Stephanie also checks the emails and answers the ones. Um, if she gets to them first, then she will answer them really quickly if she has an answer. Rita says, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, everybody is awesome. Thank you to Jana and Lori for helping her out. And, um, or no, sorry, not Jana, just Lori. I'm reading things wrong. Lori says, every time I think I've made progress on my to-dos, I find other steps that need to be done. I can't keep up with all of the to-dos. Yes, and that's something where it's a process of adjusting your mindset with to-dos, but I might even do a webinar about managing to-dos and about how to reduce the number of to-dos and all of the to-dos that we have. So that's an idea that I've had for a webinar for next year because there are definitely ways to reduce it and new ways to think about your to-dos that can help. But it can easily feel like two steps forward, four steps back sometimes, but it's really not. Just remember, as long as you are taking steps forward, you will get through it. It's just sometimes more gets added than gets taken off, but that is not all the time. And you are absolutely going to make it through. I promise. And you're doing amazing in the group hikes, Lori. You get so much done during those. So that's helpful. All right. So Trina says, a sticky note with a date due marked and sticking out of the top as tabs to see at the top of the to-do file. That's perfect. Yes, that's a great way to sort of flag your to-dos that are due soon. Because if you see that sticky note sticking up in the date, then you will know exactly when it's due. I love that. Good thinking, Trina. Good thinking. Peg says, I just realized that I need a red flag to-do folder in a someday to-do folder, things that don't have a due date. So I just made a red flag to-do folder. Brilliant. Love that, Peg. Yes, because there are two types of to-dos, right? 
They're the ones that have deadlines and that it's really important that you do them. And then there are the dues that it would be really nice if you did them, but nothing's going to catch fire if you don't. So love that idea, Peg. Thank you for sharing. You guys are so brilliant. This is why I love all of you. <laughs> all right. So just a reminder, if you don't already have the challenge schedule page written down or bookmarked, make sure to write that down because that's where you can find all the replays this week, all the different tasks for each day and everything important. And that's also where you can register for the public group hike, the live Q&A session, all of that stuff. So finally, schedule reminders for yourself, especially at the beginning when you are getting used to your action file. So scheduling reminders um, to both make sure that you've put your papers into your action file. So that way, when the reminder goes off, you can go, oh, okay, is there anything that I got lazy or forgot and just put papers down somewhere else? If so, let me grab those, stick them in my action file. And then also set reminders for your to-do folder. So, hey, reminder goes off, you go, okay, I need to browse my to-do folder really quickly. Make sure there's nothing coming up that's urgent and pull it out and flag it if it is. So setting reminders, you can set recurring cal calendar events if you want to. So if you have a paper calendar, you can just hand write it on a recurring basis. Or if you use your calendar on your phone, then on, your, on all the phone calendars, it's very easy to set an event and then set it to repeat. So you can have it repeat once a week, twice a week, whatever schedule works best for you. Try to set it for a time that you know you will actually be able to do it, though. Because otherwise, if you set it for a time and you happen to be busy, a lot of times we'll put it off and forget. Reminders apps are also very good. So if you have uh, an iPhone, then it automatically comes with the reminders app. Android has a reminders app on it. There are also some very good ones that you can get from your app store. But those reminders apps are great because if it's a bad time when it comes up, you can hit snooze and it'll remind you again later. So setting your reminder on an app on your phone, which we usually have our phones around us all the time, that's a great way to remember to at least browse your to-dos, right? And then you can also do visual reminders. If you wanted to stick a post-it note on your coffee pot to remind yourself while the coffee brews, browse your to-dos or put your papers in your action file, then that's one great way. You could put a note on your bathroom mirror. You can you know, stick a note to your car keys. So that way when you're coming in the house, you remember, oh yeah, put the mail in the action file. So scheduling reminders for yourself, especially at the very beginning when it's not a habit yet, right? Then that's going to be helpful. And then finally, create habits. So some of the easiest ways to create habits a new habit is to attach it to an existing habit, right? Because there are a number of things that we do without even really thinking about them every day. And if you can attach this new habit to already something that you're doing, it makes it so much easier to remember. So, you know, I've mentioned when your coffee's brewing, if every morning you brew your coffee, then if you just attach the habit of, okay, while my coffee brews, I'm going to browse through my to-dos. Or when my coffee brews, I'm going to make sure to pick up any papers that did not make it in the action file and stick them in. Uh, maybe Saturday mornings, if you walk the dog on Saturday morning, then your next step, when you come back in, check your to-dos. That's an idea of attaching it to an existing uh, habit. Or maybe on Sunday nights, if you're one of those people who likes on Sunday nights to prepare for your week and write out your to-do list, that's the perfect time to grab your to-do folder and see what needs to be added to that week's to-do list. So attach it to something you're already doing to make that habit easier. All right, so Lori says to Trina, she says, there are accordion folders with numeric tabs that you could use instead of sticky notes. There are, but it does make that a lot. Uh, then you're coming out of the action file and it makes it a much more complex task of getting the papers in there. So. Unless you are the type who really loves to be super, super organized and likes those extra steps, um, then that's probably adding more work than necessarily needs to be done. Because we want to make sure first and foremost that things get into the action file. And if there are 
a choice of which date it's due, then that's one more thing that your brain has to think about. And it's going to make it a little bit harder. So the accordion folders are great for if you want to use that system when you're going through your to-do folder to pull them out and put them in your accordion folder when you're organizing them and you do your browsing. But you probably still want a to-do folder for when you first come in the house and or write a note to yourself and you can just stick it in the to-dos really quickly. So that's probably how I would incorporate that. But great idea, Lori. Um, and if you are the type of person who really likes that extra structure, then that could be an additional step of how to browse your to-dos and make sure that you have them all categorized. Janice says, for the to-do folder, if you're on a budget or just don't want to add more items to the house, you can use a see-through three-ring binder sleeve in the upright position sticking up with the next item. That's absolutely true. You totally can. Or you can even just stick your to-do uh, papers upright so they stick out. Yeah, definitely. And I am all for not adding more to your house if you don't need to. I love it. Joanna says, big plus of these sessions for me is all the great ideas from Suzanne and everyone else. Thanks. Aw, I love that. And yes, I love when we share ideas in the comments. It's fantastic. Thank you for pointing that out. <laughs> Janice says about uh, doing it while you're brewing your coffee, brew and do or brew and to do. I like that, a brew and to do session. All right. And then finally, finally, one of the important things that we tend to skip because we don't feel like it's important is celebrating ourselves. Because if you set up a system of really appreciating what you've done and celebrating your progress, even with the tiniest thing, maybe even with every single to-do that you do, give yourself a mini celebration, even if it's just taking a moment and thinking, you did good. That's going to retrain your brain. And your brain is going to look forward to completing to-do items versus resisting, right? Because if we're not celebrating ourselves, we're just thinking that we should, we're feeling guilty about not doing it as fast, it's drudgery, and that's what our brain's going to relate to it. But if you get into the habit of celebrating yourself for completing things, then your brain starts to remember that positive, happy feeling. It triggers the dopamine in your brain. Your brain gets addicted to, hey, I want that dopamine. I want to do something where I can celebrate myself again and feel happy again. So then it thinks maybe I should do a to-do because then I can get that happy feeling. So the more you celebrate yourself, even for the tiniest steps, even like in the paper path course, most of those steps are 15 minutes or less. And you could do just one a day if you wanted to. But it's a great way to do a step and then celebrate yourself right afterwards. So that way your brain remembers that it is a positive. So remember that you will stumble sometimes, especially when it's new. All right. Do not beat yourself up over anything that has to do with paper organizing, especially with your action file. When you stumble, just remember, just restart. Right. As long as you get back up and restart and try again, it will become a habit and it will work for you. I can guarantee it because all of the winners in life are the ones that stumbled, but then got back up, right? Celebrate yourself for every small step that you do and share your accomplishments. Not only is that going to make you feel good about yourself, but it will inspire other people. So if you post in the Facebook group or during the hike, we always talk about at the end of our hike session, what we accomplished so we can celebrate and share what our accomplishments are. And that can also motivate other people to see what can be done. So share your accomplishments. All right, before we recap, tell me in the comments, what is your aha takeaway moment from today? What thought or idea today made you go, hmm, okay, I can do that. I would like to try that. So let me know in the comments what that is. So Lori says, my celebration for all I accomplished this week is going to see the movie Ticket to Paradise this afternoon, starring George Clooney and Julia Roberts. That's a fantastic celebration, Lori. I love that. And I love George Clooney and Julia Roberts. That's going to be a good one. You'll have to let me know how good it is. I'm sure it's going to be fantastic. Peg says, schedule to do and schedule celebrating being done. Yeah, yeah, schedule that too. You earned it. Lori says, Peg, I like that. Schedule celebrate done. 
Janice says, yes, this entire event is my reset to get back on track again. I love that. All right. So as you let me know your aha moments, I'm going to do a quick recap. Okay. So talking about the action file this week, remember if you're using the standard folders, there's only one folder that you need to check and that's the to-do folder. The others, when it gets full, it gets finished. They are not as important. They, you don't have to remember to do them. Second, we talked about reframe your thinking. So just because you're checking your to-dos does not mean that you have to do it right then. You can pull it out and flag it if it's something that needs to be done soon. So give your to-do folder a fun name. You can change how you talk about checking your to-dos. You can call it browse to-dos or like Jana said, shopping your to-dos. And think of, um, think of it as a small bite of time. It's not a long process checking your to-dos, right? It could take five minutes. Check your to-dos really quickly or browse or shop your to-dos. We talked about making it a game. So make it more fun for yourself. You can do to-do roulette if you want to, or give yourself a 15-minute challenge. See, see how many you can do in 15 minutes. And you can find action file buddies and join the group hikes. Bring your action file to the group hikes if you're a fat path member. And then you can browse your to-dos. You don't have to do them all, but browse your to-dos and you can prep for the week, right? Then we talked about if you're an out of sight, out of minder, give yourself visual reminders of what's coming up. So one of the ideas was you could clip the upcoming to-dos to the front of your action file. You could have a bulletin board or a wall pocket near your to-do folder. Um, some of the ideas that all of you guys came up with was adding a flag that sticks up, a post-it note that sticks up with a date that sticks out of your to-do folder. That's a good idea. And then we talked about scheduling reminders. So set recurring calendar events or use your reminder app or even sit put visual reminders around your house, like a post-it note to remind yourself to both make sure that papers have gotten into your action file, and if they haven't, put them in really quick, and to just browse your to-dos. So you don't have to do them, just reminder to browse them. And then we talked about how to create habits around your action file and attaching the action file habit to another habit that you already have, such as Jana's Bruin to-do, so when you make your coffee, maybe browse your to-dos or attaching it to something else that you're already doing, like after you walk the dog, check your to-do folder. And then finally, we talked about celebrating yourself. Make sure to take time, even if it's just a minute, to give yourself a pat on the back to celebrate every to-do that you do, every step that you do in the Paper Path course, every time that you file your papers, whatever it is, every small step, celebrate yourself because that's going to retrain your brain to associate happy things with these completing tasks. And you will stumble sometimes. I know that there are a number of people who've joined the challenge who've built their action file before and just fell off the wagon. And you know what? They're going to succeed because they are restarting now. So whenever you do stumble, as soon as you realize you stumbled, just restart, clean slate it, Forgive yourself and start again, and you will absolutely make it. All right, in the comments really quickly. Uh, let's see. Finding there's a bunch of them, which is awesome. Uh, yeah, Jana says the event, that's right, is her reset to get back on track again, which is why you will succeed, Jana, because you are getting back up and doing it. Trina says the to-dos are the only time-sensitive items. That's the aha. Yes. Yeah, so it relieves a lot of pressure for the other ones, right? Peggy's aha moment, taking one item out of the to-dos and doing it in 5 to 15 minutes. Yeah, right? Super easy way to do it. Terry says, thank you. So uh, rename, so to-do does not seem so overwhelming. I love using fun names for things that would otherwise be stressful. Good one. Sarah likes the idea that to-do can be to check instead of actually doing them. Lynn says, I'm good about my to-dos. I think I'll schedule Fridays to file. I love that. That's a good one. Beth says, I'm going to set reminders for my to-dos. And Lori says, I just realized my action file doesn't have some of the folders Susanna suggested. I have a big to-do pile that I keep moving around to different places. <laughs> Debbie says, I procrastinate, but I'm drawn to games. I love the idea of to-do roulette. I'm drawn to games too, right? It's much more fun. Janice says, dog and do. <laughs> I love it. Love it. 
Laurie says, my aha is to schedule time to look through the to-do pile. Yay. And Peg says, I built my action file before, but learning that only to-do must be done is my takeaway today. Thanks. You're so welcome. You are all doing absolutely amazing. I love it. And remember, check it out. The paper path is only available until Sunday night. The bonus goes away Saturday night. You can get the course or the course plus the membership up to you. But if now is the time that you do want to get all of your papers organized the easy way and be told step by step how to do it for your personality type, then the paper path course might be for you. Check it out. See if it's a good fit for you for right now in your life. If it is, then I would love to have you join me. So join the paper path course. Um, if you join before Saturday, that's tomorrow night, then you can also attend the welcome party. So the welcome party bonus will be a fun event where we can see who else has joined, get to know each other a little bit, but also you can get an overview of the course, the membership, and how to get started and tips to really make it the best that it can be. So make sure enroll in the paper path course if you're interested before the end of the night tomorrow, if you want that bonus, Sunday it goes away until sometime next year. So that enrollment will close so that I can focus on the students and make sure that all the new students and existing students are getting the support they need. So that's why I close the enrollment, just so I can make sure that I have the time and focus to really help everybody out. All right, so Peggy says, thanks again, Susanna. You're so welcome. And Lori says, I appreciate being able to repeat hearing how to set up and use the action file. Fantastic. Yay. Well, remember, check out the challenge schedule page if you've missed anything this week. I hope to see you tomorrow. We don't have a regular live session. So tomorrow is the public group hike and the office hours. Check out more about those on the challenge schedule page. And then Sunday at 1 p.m. Eastern time will be our last live session for the challenge. And then we will go back to our normal just Thursday talks lives. So um, Lori says, what time is the welcome party? On October 27th, it is at 6 p.m. Eastern time. 6 p.m. Eastern time, October 27th. And if you already own the Paper Path course or membership, you will receive an email as well telling you more information about it and giving you the invite link. And then Beth says, thank you, Susanna. You're so welcome. Well, I love you. Keep being amazing. Keep doing your small steps. I will see you tomorrow. Have an amazing day. Bye-bye now.